This edition of True Heels BTR is brought to you by the Independent Wrestling Expo. Live from Dallas, Texas on August 28th and 29th, it's going to feature Nick Aldis defending the NWA World Heavyweight Championship against Jeff Cobb and the winner of a battle royal. You will also see Brian Pillman Jr. versus Sean Spears. Now, this is True Heels BTR with Kyle Hessler. Enjoy. Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your True Heel Phenom, SP3. We are back once again with another interview for True Heels BTR Between the Ropes. This time, we have a very special guest. We have former fighter, a pro wrestling fan, promoter for FW Promotions. This man is the mastermind behind one of the biggest independent events coming this summer on August 28th and 29th in Dallas, Texas, the Independent Wrestling Expo. It is the one, the only Kyle Hessler. Thank you very much for coming on the on the show with us, man. Thanks for having me, man. I'm just happy to be, you know, we're a few days out from the show and I'm still excited talking about it, just getting ready for this, uh, you know, a big event. And it's the, it's, it's going to be a, the next, like, you know, four days are just going to be crazy for me. So <laughs> you're a busy man. So I definitely appreciate you taking time to chat with us, talk about the Indie Wrestling Expo. We want to learn everything we need to know about these big major events. You guys watching this interview, you guys can get tickets. If you're in the Dallas, Texas area, there's still limited amount of tickets available. But of course, if you're not in Dallas, Texas, you can also watch it on Fight. TV. Huge news this week. Yep. Fight TV will be telecasting the Indie Wrestling Expo and that's huge, man. I, I love to see stuff like this. But before we get into our chat and our interview, you viewers at home, push the like button, show your support for True Hills BTR and the Indie Wrestling Expo. Of course, there is the iCard down at the bottom where you could subscribe and the bell to stay notified for all the great content right here on True Hill Heat. And True Hill Heat is worth Working with the Indie Wrestling Expo. This interview is a part of that. Thank you so much for having us be a part of it, man. Of course. No, and hey, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, right? I always appreciate when, when our interviewees go. do it. <laughs> and there you go. Retweet, re subscribe. I, you know, it's funny. I've been, off, I've been off social media since like 2016, and I got back on it, and just having to learn all the little, you know, ins and outs of so you know social media and stuff again is is kind of funny just the retweeting and subscribing and all that good stuff so the the lingo is 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 all a part of the journey <laughs> oh for sure for sure so my good brother uh first of all i want to know a little bit about yourself how did you get into the professional wrestling world as a fan and then transitioning into becoming a promoter so yeah i i, I um I got into MMA and kickboxing about 10 years ago or so. I had a couple professional fights, a lot of amateur fights. And then um, I had like two losses in a row and just decided to get a full-time job um, just to supplement. And didn't really ever think that was going to be like my official retirement, but it just kind of life got in the way. I found a really good sales job and I've been there for six years since. So um, from that, but through that, I've always had a love of pro wrestling and, and MMA and boxing and all that stuff. And that's never really left you. Although it's somewhat like a bad girlfriend, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, I don't like what my girl's done. So I might not go see her for a little bit. Cause definitely there were some hard pots, hard spots with, uh, being a wrestling fan over the last like two decades. But, uh, you know, I always kept that passion. I was that love, always interested, I always watched old matches. I'm a big, I'm like, I used to watch, uh, Misawa and Misawa and Kenta Kabashi. So always watch that stuff and always been a wrestling fan. And, um, so to make the story a little shorter, uh, my business partner, Stephen Wright, who actually owns fighting words promotions was my trainer. He still trains guys in the UFC. So he's trained like, uh, he coached Johnny Hendricks to the UFC welterweight title. He's coached, uh, Kamor Asadine and a few other, uh, world champions. So he still does that. Um, 
and he's done a couple of kickboxing boxing shows. He brought me on board to kind of help out. It's it's a lot to run a promotion, and so the way that this year started, um, we just kind of like looked around and said, "Do you want to do a wrestling show?" And we we're like, "Yeah, let's do it." So um, wrestling, in some ways, is a little bit easier to promote than boxing. Um, there's it's they both have their challenges. They're just different yeah. challenges, and so it kind of worked out that we the headaches of boxing and kickboxing this year um, were kind of <laughs> it kind of took the decision out of our hands. You, basically, right now it's like impossible to do live boxing in the state of Texas with COVID. So to start the year, we had planned out a couple different combat sports shows, but then we also planned this weekend six months ago. So this was actually in the works before COVID happened, before any of the craziness that this year was, uh, this, this was kind of in the works. And so that kind of worked out to our advantage because we've always been kind of tenacious about, um, you know, sticking to the, the weekend and just, we kind of gritted back our teeth and said, you know, let's make, let's figure out a way to make this work. So, um, ultimately we did and, um, you know, and now we're here. That that's awesome that you it's all started before this craziness with the pandemic uh started. So gotta gotta pick back up on our interview here. Our good brother Kyle had a setting a setting change. He had to had to move on to his to his uh vehicle of choice. His vehicle. <laughs> but I, and I, I wanna just I was telling you off camera, but I want your fans here. I, I owe you an apology. I was not trying to mess around. It's just kind of one of those uh, crazy situations. So I appreciate the uh, the quick change of scenery and stuff. So no worries. It, it's always it's always cool with the with the editing magic. How how smooth this transition will be. <laughs> but yeah. Yes, before we uh before the setting change, I asked you how has been, you know, you're in the Dallas area, you're driving right now in the Dallas area. How has been the pandemic era for you there? Well, it's you know, you know, what I kind of try to tell people, I, I like being an honest guy. I I personally have never really been concerned about COVID, you know, just based on what I'm reading and seeing and all this different stuff. But you know what? The, the reality is we're trying to we're, we're all in this world together. And I, I believe in loving your neighbor. So, um, you know, I, I've been compliant with as much of uh, all the stuff that's going on as possible. And for our show, um, the good news was it, frankly, it doesn't even matter what opinion. You know, I have a lot of fans who don't want to wear masks to the show. And, um, I, you know, personally, I wish we didn't have to, but we've made agreements with people. So, um, in the, you know, in the kind of with all the COVID stuff going on, I just kind of go like, you know, we're just all this in together and we just got to work with what we've got. Um, so it's, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, I don't think it's, you know, I, I don't think it's been that crazy. Um, but, you know, we're all just trying to make do with what we've got. And it's just been kind of an interesting time. And I'm sure it's the same way in most places. Like some places have probably been easier. Some places have been harder. Um, and we just got to work with what we got. I mean, I keep, you know, I keep one of my masks with me at all times whenever I, whenever I have to wear it. And then, you know, I, I've been hand sanitizing a lot more and um, being more mindful of all that different stuff. So, you know, it just personally in Dallas, Fort Worth, I haven't noticed it that much. I've noticed more of the repercussions and, and being safe yeah. with it. And I do know a few people that have probably had it, you know, and just, you know, it sucks, but you know, and that's, it's not to diminish anyone's experience or anything like that. That's just my experience. So, uh, I hope everyone that hears that hears that I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm proceeding as cautious as possible. And I think everyone is trying to do the best with what the situation calls for, you know? So absolutely with, with that in mind, how has been like the safety precautions being placed in set for, uh, the indie wrestling expo? So the, the kind of the nice thing is because the of the talent we're working with, um, we've kind of had to make some agreements. And ultimately, it's kind of like, you know, like if there's let's say there's 20 different uh, like CDC or whatever kind of guidelines or whatever stuff you have to do that to make this as safe as possible. Um, you know, you talk to one organization and they're like, yeah, if you want to use our talent, you're going to need to have 15 of those 20. OK, and then you call another one and they might say, well, we need to use we need to have 10 of those 20 uh, guidelines, but they're 
but the, there are five of the other ones. You know what I mean? So it's kind yeah. of what I'm trying to say is like it's kind of like one of those funny things where because we're working with so many different people and because so many people have made suggestions and requests um, that we kind of have all our we've we've had our all our bases is covered for quite a while. Um, you know, like one of the ones was one of the managers I was talking to was for some, one of our bigger names was asking at the expo when we're doing like, you know, you would normally be able to do like handshakes and stuff like that. He just requested, you know, no handshakes, just fist bumps. And he said, um, no side by side photos. He'll do a photo in front of the table and, or the guy, the fan can be in front of the table. He can be behind the table. And then he asked for hand sanitizers at every table, all totally reasonable. So we've got all of that covered, all of that will be there. And, um, you know, we're, we're asking people to wear masks. Um, well, I'm not asking. We're, we're saying, please wear masks. Um, you know, and again, I, whether you think they work or not, it's not really relevant. We're, we have agreements. And um, I think it's just best at this time that everyone just follows along with everything we've got um, in order to just make this event safe and comfortable for the performers and the fans. So, Makes sense. That's what it's all about. I mean, if you didn't have these precautions set in place, this event probably wouldn't be going through. So you have to you have to make the measures regardless of how people feel. So t tell us a little bit about this event. Is it mostly just the wrestling event? What it, what is it like with the meet and greets? What do you have planned all together with this uh, three events in two days? So the whole goal when we first started putting this together was we just liked this idea of doing like a big, big indie show. And, um, you know, we had the, the, the ideas for it shifted and changed with the evolving world around us. But for the most part, the card actually turned out pretty much how the way we wanted it. Um, but what happened was with the cancellation of WrestleMania and then SummerSlam, we knew that a lot of fans wouldn't be getting those like fan access um, yeah that you would normally get now I, I, every interview if I, I've been to where I brought this up, I try to ask like, have you been to one of those fan access, like either at a mania or something? Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know that it's, it's kind of, there's nothing really quite like it. It's just the whole, like I was in New yeah. York, I was in New York last year and I got to go to takeover. I got to go to the new Japan show and then I got to go to mania and that was my second mania. It was just, you know, it's just a lot of fun. There's just not really anything else like it. So it's one of those things that um, uh, it's just one of those things that we kind of wanted to try to get an indie version of that. And I say that kind of with humility. I'm not trying to compare our show to a WrestleMania. I'm just saying that that was kind of the intended purpose. And that's why the expo looks the way it does with trying to get vendors and merch sales and stuff during Saturday, during the day of Saturday. Um, that, that was kind of the, the thought process behind it. So, you know, you're going to get, I mean, I think we've got, I know we've got about 60 competitors over the weekend, and I think we've got about 40 some matches. I mean, it's just a staggering wow. amount of talent and shows. And, you know, it's two full cards Friday night and Saturday night. And, um, you know, they're, they're complete shows. Um, and then we also, during the expo, while you're getting, meet, you know, doing some meet and greets and there's some contests going on. Um, we're going to have some live Q&A. Chris Van Vliet is going to be doing some uh, like a live podcast with a couple different people, including Jake Roberts. And then um, we're also going to have some matches going on at that time. So there'll be um, some what we're calling our halftime heat matches going on. And those, you know, those will be those will those will be some featured bouts. And it, it's just going to be a good time. Like I said, there's just a lot of wrestling going on this weekend. So. And you love to see it. So we got to talk a little bit about this major, major card for the Indie Wrestling Expo. I think the main one that everyone is really like talking about when they're talking about this event has to be the NWA World Heavyweight Champion Nick Aldis being on this show. And he's going to be defending the title against um, a man that's a, one of the hottest free agents in the game right now, Jeff Cobb. And then we, you're going to have a battle royal on night... I think it's night one to determine who's the third competitor in this match. So how did you put this match together? So, um, you know, a big, a big thing for our wrestling card is we want to make sure we're featuring, uh, 
local talent. Um, you know, the, the Indies, it's kind of like baseball, right? You've got your yeah. single A guys, you got your double A guys, you got your triple A guys, um, you got your major leaguers, all that stuff. You got your international baseball, your Japanese, all that stuff. And that's like, I'm not trying to compare. I don't want to compare anybody. Like, I don't want to say like Lance Archer is like a triple A guy. That's not really fair to him or triple A, you know, it's, it doesn't really work. But the point is there's just tears to this sort of thing. And a big goal for us was to make sure that we're featuring everybody. So we've got guys that are a year, year and a half into their, you know, into their wrestling careers. They're going to be in the battle Royale and they're going to have an opportunity of a lifetime. They kind of get a chance to uh, jumpstart their career because if they win that, you know, they're going to be in there with the NWA world champion. Um, But then, like you said, we've got Jeff Cobb, the hottest free agent in wrestling right now. Um, So you can't really pass that one up. Um, and then, of course, we've got the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, Nick Aldis, the longest running dis- d- uh, title belt in professional wrestling will be defending our show. So you, you get a great sense of, like, it's just a stacked card. And um, I-, I love that triple threat because you really do get, um, you know, you get the best of the indies with that. So I, th- I think that main event, that, to culminate the whole weekend, I think that's the best main event we could put together. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship has, like you said, the longest running title in the business. And, you know, Nick Aldis has kind of put it back on the map with his work in NWA power and throughout the world defending the title. But he's not the only world champion on the card. On night one in the main event, you have MLW Major League Wrestling World Champion Jacob Fatu, who is who is in my eyes like the last year he was one of the hot free agents one of the guys in the game that was like everyone wanted to get their hands on and you guys have him on the indie wrestling expo and he's going to be versing chris adonis aka the man the master of the master lock chris masters that one is just of such an interesting match like how did you think of that one and put that together for for night one so i wanted to I mean, realistically, we uh, realistically we wanted to gather as many big names as possible, as you can tell. And one of the goals I had had was, you know, I looked at MLW, and we've we've actually got a lot of their champions. Yeah. But Jacob too is he's got it. Um, him and Alex Hammerstone from MLW, they've got the it factor. Uh, I was talking for two earlier this week on the phone, just working stuff out. And I just told, it was the first time I got to talk to him. I said, man, you know, the reason we booked you is just, obviously you've got the name. I mean, you can't, you know, you're for two, but he's got the smoothest moves for a big guy that I've ever seen. I just think he's excellent in the ring. And when we were just putting matches together around, you know, um, in kayfabe, I could say maybe some people were scared, maybe something like that. But Chris Adonis stepped up to the plate. And really what it was was, uh, the, the, the truth is, we wanted to find somebody that matched the name value that we were getting with Jacob Fatu. And that's not to say that we couldn't get somebody else on the card. We just felt like they suited the card better somewhere else. And ultimately, I just, like you said, I think it's just a great match. And, you know, some people might not remember Chris Masters or they might, you know, just remember him for doing the Master Lock Challenge from all those years ago. Um, yeah. His work has gotten so much better. I actually was talking to him and I said, I'm surprised you haven't gotten a call back from WWE. And I mean, he's a little bit older, but he's not like out of it. His work is so good. It's so crisp and clean. You know what I mean? He's been, he was just at, that, um, I think he was at black label pro or gcw this last weekend and he looked great i mean he's just he looks you know no bones on that guy no flies on that guy so i think he's a great he's just got one of the best bodies ever that's ever been in the game presence wise look wise is one of the best and i don't mean to take down on the the master lock because he's actually going to do the master lock challenge on night two so he's gonna yeah he's Yeah, he's wrestling night one, and I was talking to him. I said, you know, I'd love to use you for night two. I'm just not sure, you know, what we might do. And, you know, we just kind of went back and forth. I said, man, would you be interested in doing the Master Lock Challenge? I love that. 
And he said, yeah, I'd love to do that. So, we, um, you know, it's going to be kind of an open challenge thing. He's going to have an opportunity to challenge some people for it. I, it's going to be great. I, I'm so excited that it's coming back. So. So we've already touched on, you know, you got hot free agents, you have the MLW world champion, you got the NWA's world heavyweight champion, you have stars from all these bigger main promotions, even all elite wrestling, guys like Lance Archer. Over on night two, the co-main event features a matchup and a rivalry that kind of started in AEW on AEW Dark, as it's going to be Sean Spears going one-on-one with one of our favorites. He's been on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel before. He is Warrior Wrestling Champion as well, which we also sponsored that show. Brian Pillman Jr. This one, I feel, is just... uh, You have, like, one of, like, the main rivalries that's been simmering underneath to a lot of people's eyes. But tell us how that match came together in your eyes. (laughs) So it's kind of a funny one. I do want to preference this. Um, we're, we're, we're talking right now with some officials. There, For those that are going to watch on Fight, there is a small chance this has to get blocked out. And I apologize for that. That's just something that is last-minute kind of stuff. Um, really do apologize. That's not on That's not on anyone. If anyone, that's on us. Um, I just want to own up to that real quick. Um, so if anyone... But we will... I do think we have the ability to put this free on YouTube. So I do promise that if it is blacked out we will make sure to try to get it out for free at another date um so that all being said this was actually one of the first matchups we put together um i probably put together with uh, there's there's three people involved we were using a local texas booker named devin uh steven wright and then myself this was a matchup i put together uh probably in april um i just loved it and then it actually happened on dark and i was i was i was messing with I was joking with Pillman up at Warrior. I was like, so Khan thought that was a good matchup, didn't he? And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's one of those it, it, I'm just joking. There's, It's one of those things where I think that uh, the AEW didn't know about it. It's no big deal. It's I'm just having fun with it. But it was kind of cool that it actually did turn. Now it's a rematch instead of a first time ever. Um, I think that it's kind of cool because Pillman did lose. And that guy is hungry. But he lost on... You know, it's kind of like football. I mean, he lost in a hostile environment, right? It's, yeah. you know, it wasn't his home. It's not his home yet. Uh, now he's a little bit more comfortable there. But on Saturday night, Spears is coming back to the Indies where Pillman's king right now. Um, I got to see Pillman work live up at Warrior a few weeks ago. Um, dude's on top of his game. So I think I think Spears has a challenge in front of him. I, I think this is a five star classic written all over it. I think this is going to be an excellent match, great rematch. Um, super excited for it. Yeah, Brian Brian Pillman has been one of the main stars of the independent world. Uh, like like I said, we sponsored that that Warrior Wrestling show, and he looked great pulling out the jackhammer as one of his uh, new finishers, which is beautiful right there. But you have other people that's made appearances on AEW as well. But she is the NWA World Women's Champion, Thunder Rosa. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts on Thunder Rosa and what. She she means to like women's wrestling right now and then what's her matchup going to be at the indie wrestling expo so i mean she's going against um alex uh gracia who's a top tier texas women's talent um she showed up in uh a reality of wrestling um down in houston at booker t's promotion i think she's shown up in um nwa i think she's shown up quite a bit different spots but she she's a hot young prospect um She's she's on her way up. She's great talent. She's got kind of a lucha style. Honestly, she worked. Um, my understanding is she worked some uh, either AAA or CMLL for a little bit and developed a pretty good uh, side for her. But Thunder um, Rosa is a draw, and so I don't want to. I want to talk her about her opponent a little bit. But Thunder Rosa is the real deal. I mean, this is the NWA w- Women's World Champion. A lot like Nick Aldis, I think she's brought that title way back up in prestige. Yeah. You know, I, I it, it's funny when she popped up on Dynamite. Um, I was like, "That's my girl." You know what I mean? Like that's, <laughs> that, that, that was an awesome moment for her. I think it's really cool for her, and I, I think it. I think her and Sheeta will have a great match. But if you're talking about live wrestling, um, it, we've got a better matchup just because it's it's going to be with the crowd and everything like that. But 
Thunder Rose is the real. I mean, this is the toughest. This this girl is tough as steel. She fights in the main. You know, so she's she's fighting both in the cage and in the squared circle. She's just she's there. she's got everything you want from a female. Yeah, so like like you said, like Thunder Rosa, she's just amazing. We've also had the privilege of having her on our YouTube channel as well. So we definitely agree with you. She is nothing but a draw and one of the best female wrestlers in the world. Uh, another person that showed up on Di- that's been on Dynamite, that's a pr- member of AEW. You got Brian Pil- uh, You got a uh, Brian Cage on this on this card as well. He is awesome. You, like you said before, you got Jake the Snake Roberts, the legend on this card. But tell us a little bit about a couple of the people that might be lesser known that you think is going to make a major impact on this weekend so i want to hype up my boy chandler hopkins the young gun um he's actually going to be competing against lance archer um this is the this is the best prospect that nobody has seen yet he is um he has complete competed in mlw i think twice once against loki but most people don't know who this guy is. They're going to be blown away by Chandler Hopkins come uh, Friday night. Him and Lance are going to tear down the house. This is going to be one of the great under. This is going to be one of the great David versus Goliath, math, Goliath matches you've ever seen, and especially since Jake the Snake is going to be with Lance. Um, so not only does Chandler have the size disadvantage, he's got the personnel disadvantage as well. So that's going to be an exceptional matchup. Um, I also want to highlight probably my favorite matchup that we've got going on uh, in terms of kind of something you don't really see that often. On night one, we've got a um, uh, what we're calling our super beef all heavyweight uh, tag team te- uh, elimination match. So that's um, that's a 10 man tag match with uh, Alex Hammerstone, Ryan Davidson, Madman Fulton, Sam Adonis and um, uh, Moonshine Martell. Versus Rodney Mack, uh, Apex, Jake something, uh, Black Torres, and uh, oh gosh, I'm gonna forget his last. Uh, forget him. Uh, oh, Gabriel Gallo, and it's just it's oh. all like, yeah. It's it. I mean, there's literally there's probably like I mean, all those guys weigh two twenty five plus. They're heavyweights, you know. Um, so I mean, you got to you got to reinforce the ring for that one. For sure. <laughs> I mean, we're talking legitimately. I mean, like four tons in there. I mean, it's going to be a massive matchup. Um, so I just think that's going to be fun because I love those old school Survivor Series style matches. And you just don't see that on the indies. And, um, you know, it's Team Hammerstone versus Team Mac. And, uh, you know, uh, we were talking about Alex Hammerstone earlier. This is another guy that's just, you know, uh, he's the MLW Open Weight Champion. Uh, you know, he's he's got it. And so I'm really excited to see what he does with his team. He's going to lead him to war. But there's, you know, just that whole matchup has got just such a good sprinkling of talent. You know, you've got Sam Adonis, excellent indie guy. I mean, that guy's phenomenal. I can't wait to see him versus Cage is also one of the better matchups. Um, so that'll be in the second night. But in that uh, Survivor Series style matchup, you know, you got Sam Adonis. You got Jake something of impact. You've got Black Torres, who is by far the most fascinating luchador most people don't know about this guy but he is basically a heavyweight luchador he's really cool kind of like kind of like luchasaurus but a little bit different um so he'll just be a really interesting guy to watch um so that'll just be that'll just be a lot of fun that i'm really excited for that 10 man um and then i mentioned the brian cage sam adonis that's probably my other favorite singles matchup but you know you've got all these great matchups myron's uh myron Reed versus Warhorse. That's going to be excellent. So it's just, you know, Snoop Strikes versus uh, Laredo Kid. Um, have you ever seen Laredo Kid? I mean, he's just- uh, I've seen Laredo Kid. Laredo Kid is is so talented. I've seen him against uh, Sammy Guevara, a part of uh, AAA before. Is this guy, he's one of the best light heavyweights in the game right now. Yeah, for sure. And so he's going against Snoop Strikes. You know, that guy's, you know, formerly of Injustice. I mean, that guy's excellent so uh we've got all these matches you know i've been telling the guys openly like steal the show like that's been our them is just like go out there and have a a five-star classic like you go do it you know hopefully we give everybody enough time to perform their craft but it's just such a loaded card i can't even give it justice to all the matches 
Um, you know, we've got the women's one night tournament with Jordan Grace, Alabama, uh, Christy James, and um, uh, Erica Torres. That's a four women one night tournament. That's awesome. We've got a men's tournament, same thing, four men one night. Uh, Matt Seidel, uh, Jake Logan, Lowrider, and then Jordan Oliver. I mean, that's talk about a man. That's just that, and that's all gonna be in one night. That's that's how. I don't want to hype. I, I like hyping my own show, but I like doing it like from a fan's perspective. It's just such a loaded card. You're so. saying some of the the biggest names that's been in other promotions. Like I said before, you have guys that have been in WWE, AEW, MLW, NWA, PWG. Like these are the the best of the best of the independent wrestling world. This is like an all star weekend, and that's why I love the fact that we're working with you and that we were able to get you on to kind of talk about this show. Yeah, absolutely, and um, you know. I, the, the one thing as, as we're, you know, kind of coming to a close with everything is I just want to say uh, I'm glad that we're getting further and further. We're knowing more about COVID and coronavirus, but I just got to say, you know, early on, um, we got a lot of flack and probably maybe we should have. I don't know, but we got some flack for wanting to put on this show because people didn't think it was safe. I don't know if they were realizing that how far out it was, but I just want to say to people, um, we're doing this as safe as we can. And, you know, we're not sure what kind of money we're going to bring in. I mean, this is a business. I'm a wrestling fan, but this is a business. I have no idea what kind of money we're going to make, whether it's, uh, you know, and it just is what it is. I'm just having fun putting it on. And we've done a really good job of being professional. But the one thing I want to say with all of this, and, and you probably feel the same way too. A lot of these guys have not worked. So these are guys that have put, you know, whether it's, couple years or a decade plus of wrestling training and wrestling matches they've put that much time into their passion their craft and their career and they haven't been able to do that since uh you know since march and i i, I don't want to say the names of these people because th that doesn't really matter but the names of some of the people you wouldn't think have worked in six months would surprise you there's people that if we start dropping those names you'd be like whoa whoa, that guy hasn't done anything in six months, but it's just the world we live in right now. So I'm just grateful as, you know, as, as we're getting closer to the show, I'm just happy that no matter what ends up happening Friday and Saturday night, that these guys will get to go out there and wrestle for the first time in, in so long. So. Yeah, I mean, the, one of the main reasons why we started this series for True Hills uh, BTR kind of like during this whole pandemic era is to kind of give the independent wrestlers this platform to kind of talk about everything. And that's the reason why we worked with Warrior Wrestling for Friday Night Lights, why we're working with you guys for Indie Wrestling Expo. Like we realized that these independent wrestlers put have to put food on their table food on the table for their family and they've been like in pause uh, ever since this whole thing started and life has to move on after this whole pandemic and little by little that's why we ask about the the safety precautions if you're putting in the work beforehand to make it safe for not only them the performers but for the fans to come out and enjoy professional wrestling again that's what it's all about we're all a wrestling community and we all have to move forward with this so we thank you Kyle for putting this all together because it takes people like you that are like strong minded and looking forward to the future to allow us to move forward as a whole community yeah and I mean you know same but you know I say you say that to me and I, I'm, I'm humbled by that and I really appreciate that and I know all the people I've been working with would also appreciate that and feel the same way but to all those in the podcasting community and the, the just the like wrestle talk and, and you guys is just, I, I just go, you guys have been keep, you've been fighting the battle too, you know, and this is, you know, we're not one of the boys for sure, but yeah, I, I know that people appreciate it, that we're trying to do what we can. And it's not about making ourselves like, I'm not here sitting like, look at me, look at me. I'm just putting on a wrestling cart. And I'm trying to show people that, like, forget about me. I'm not, who am I? I'm just a wrestling fan. That's all I am. I'm just a wrestling fan mm -hmm. with a mind for putting stuff together. And I've got some business partners. That's really all it is. But I, I want people to look at the wrestlers and show them some appreciation come Friday and Saturday night because they really haven't been able to 
it's it's one thing to not have money coming in because some of the guys really have they, Sam Adonis was telling uh, I was listening to his interview. He had to get uh, a job for Amazon. You know what I mean? This is yeah. a top indie guy. He was working international. He was working CMLL. He was working New Japan. He was working all over the place, and he had to get a job on Amazon. And there's there's nothing wrong with getting a job at Amazon, but I'm just saying this guy had to put his passion, his career, his his livelihood on hold just to make sure that he has money coming in. And so, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that on Friday and Saturday we'll be giving these guys an opportunity to go out there and just uh, do what they love, you know. And I'm sure you see the same way. Absolutely. And I love the the passion that these performers have and the fact that they do stuff like that to kind of keep the keep the train going and then they can get back to their passion. And that's what the Indie Wrestling Expo is all about. So, Kyle, tell the people at home where they can follow you online on social media. And then one final plug for the Indie Wrestling Expo. I appreciate it. Um, it is at the Kyle Hessler. Um, so that's H E S S L E R. And that's for both Instagram and uh, Twitter. I'm more active on Twitter. I'm still learning uh, instant Ram as I call it. But um, uh, so that's how you can track me. And I, I probably keep up to date with all the different postings and stuff like that. And then um, for the wrestling, sh the, the actual show, walk up tickets are still going to be available. Um, just come to the north or come to North Richland Hills. It's in the Dallas suburb. Um, it's at the Nitex Sports Center. Uh, that's N Y T E X Sports Center. And um, walk up tickets are still going to be available $50 for Friday night, $75 for Saturday. And then there's package deals. Um, and then we will be on Fight TV. So, um, like I said earlier, there might be one, maybe two matches that aren't that we have to black out, but I think it's just one match. But it will be on Fight TV, $15. For the whole weekend, you can't do a better deal than that on Fight TV. That's a really good deal. You love to see it. Like, I'm not going to be in the Dallas area. I have five months. You're going to be at the next one. I'm going to get you out of here. I promise you. I, I'm going to hold you to that, man. <laughs> I'm waiting for you next time there's a show, all right? Thank you so much, Kai. I appreciate your time. They appreciate you putting this all together. The Indie Wrestling Expo, like he said, August 28th and 29th. You can get your tickets at the door in Dallas, Texas. Boom, yeah. right there. Or if you are like me, not in the Dallas, Texas area, you can order it for $15 on Fight TV. Well worth your money with all those big names. Brian Pillman Jr., uh, Sean Spears, Nick Aldis, Jeff Cobb. The list goes on and on and on. So make sure you get your tickets or you order on Fight TV. So... Once again, for you guys at home, like this video, share this video, show your support for the Indie Wrestling Expo, hashtag Indie Wrestling Expo on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Share this video and show your support for this huge, huge weekend. So for the Kyle Hessler, <laughs> for Indie Wrestling Expo, it is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3. This has been True Hills BTR with Kyle Hessler. We are signing off until next time.